couple of minutes before we start going in on the questions, I want to talk about how six mark questions are marked. This is going to be specifically for AQA, either triple science or combined science. It's completely fine either. The content is the same for both. And also higher and foundation, it doesn't really matter. So these are all the different command words that you can see on screen. So you'll recognize some of these. We've got describe, explain, describe a method, calculate, compare, evaluate. And an extended response question is one that's marked in levels. So you know normally you have points and then it's really annoying if sometimes you miss out a particular word and then you don't get the mark. Level of response, six mark questions. Well, it can be between four and six marks. Six mark questions are great because they give you a little bit more leniency. Now, I'm not going to spend too long going through these, but I do want to point out the difference between a few of the command words, because this is one of the biggest mistakes that I see students make. So firstly, if a command word is explain, you need to be given reasons. So you can do this in bullet points. You can state a point and then the point below should be linked to that and should be a reason. If you're describing a method, you can see here that you need to make sure that the method leads to a valid outcome. And so you need to make sure that you're including control variables, talking about your independent variable, dependent variable, all of that sort of thing. We're going to look at two required practicals today, so that will hopefully be helpful. But yeah, just make sure that it's valid and also repeats help with validity. You'll notice that you can't get five or six marks for a method if you don't make it valid. So if you don't talk about control variables, even when they don't tell you to, you just have to assume this. Compare, you need to, a really common mistake with compare questions is say you're comparing like two different types of stem cells or something, writing a paragraph on each one. We don't want to do that. We want to go in on every point should be a direct comparison statement. So I try and use the word whereas. So this is this, whereas this is this. And you'll see we've got a compare question, two compare questions in there today. And then finally, the hardest type of question is evaluate. And the biggest mistake students make with this is not including an overall conclusion. So you, even if it doesn't tell you to, you have to include an overall judgment based on the data that you, um, and based on the points that you've given. So I would do a few points on advantages or four, depending on the context of the question, a few points on disadvantages or against, depending on the context of the question, and then that, and then just a quick conclusion. And that will be enough to get you full marks. So with all of the questions that we're going to be going through today, we're going to do three things. So I'm firstly going to show you how to read the question. So exactly if I was going into an exam and what would I think? Where would I start? How would I break it down? How would I interpret the command words? I'm going to try and do this so we're doing some general revision as we go as well. So even if you say if the question mentions stem cells and it's evaluating them, I will talk a bit about what stem cells are just so that we're revising absolutely everything that could come up to do with topic one. Another thing to note is we're going to look at how to structure your answers as well. And I'm everything that I write, I'm going to structure it in the exact way that you would for the real exam. And this is all based on guidance from AQA. So bullet points, AQA love a bullet point. If you see my videos, you know I love a bullet point as well. You can actually also put your answer in a table. This is particularly useful for compare questions. And you can, I'm not going to be doing it today, but you can use a diagram as long as you clearly annotate it and you refer to it in your text. Up here, you can see it says, where is it? It says, answers do not need to be written in continuous prose. So it doesn't need to sound good. Don't ever, don't ever bother with doing a, like an introduction or anything like that. Just get straight to the point. Talking of getting straight to the point, we should probably do that now. I said earlier that I'm gonna start with the required practicals, just cause I'm gonna go in order of the most difficult question. So hopefully that's okay with you. And we're going to start, should we start with the cell structure required practical? Let's start with question two. So describe how to prepare a microscope slide of onion cells and how to use a microscope with a five times eyepiece lens to view these cells at a magnification of times 50. How are we feeling about this question? What would you be thinking if you went into an exam and saw this right now? Because this one isn't a past question. This is one that I've made up adapted from a four mark past question that was just about, I think it was just about using the microscope and I've just made it myself. So let's go to it then. <laughs> Some of you said skip it, please never skip a six mark question, not after seeing this anyway. Even if you just write something, you'll be, you'll be fine. Okay, so 
when you look at a question, you want to think about the two parts that you're breaking it into. So in this, we've got how to prepare a microscope slide. And then we've also got how to use a microscope. So you can use subheadings as well. So I'm going to start with um, preparation of the slide. OK, and remember, we're going to bullet point here. Now, it's the slide of onion cells. So this is when, do you remember those little, you've probably done this practical in school, you've got those little glass slit things, they're your slide, and you want a really thin layer of onion cells, and then you want to put them on a drop of water on the slide, and then you should have a cover slit that you're going to lower. Now, the key points that we're going to say is that you need a thin layer, and you're going to apply a stain to it, and that's going to enable you to see it. I'm 100% sure you can bullet point yes. Um, if you do AQA, you can definitely bullet point. If you go back to the slide before, that's guidance from AQA. Um, so yeah, you can bullet point. Okay, so first thing we're going to say in preparation of a slide, if it's an onion cell, we'll say we will peel off a thin, and remember thin is important because it allows the light to go through, um, peel off a thin layer of onion tissue. And we could say something like using forceps, but it won't be important, it won't be necessary to get you full marks here, but obviously I'm showing you a model answer. So you don't necessarily need to be at this level, but I mean, given that I'm here, we might as well kind of show you this. Okay, um, we're gonna peel off using forceps and we're going to place on a drop of water on a slide. Now, you might place this on water, you might just place it on iodine, it doesn't really matter. Yeah, you could use tweezers as well. Okay, and the next point then, all we need to say is add a drop of stain. You don't need to know the name of the stain, but obviously if you can say it, amazing. So add a drop of stain. Does anyone know what stain it is? If we're looking at onion cells, we actually mainly want to see the starch inside of them. It's going to make them visible. So what stains for starch? This is topic two, food tests. Iodine, yeah, well done. Okay, so we're going to add a drop of stain. Remember, we don't have to say iodine, but good if we can. Add a drop of stain, and then we lower the cover slip, which is like a little, um, got that wrong. It's really hard to write and talk. Lower the cover slip at an angle. Okay, so we lower the cover slip at an angle. And you could also get a one mark question that would ask you why you do this. And this is to avoid trapping air bubbles, but we're just describing it. So we don't need to have to go into that sort of detail. And that is it. So you should probably be thinking this is probably half of your answer, maybe, maybe probably more a third of it because there's less to say. But right now you can be confident that you've picked yourself up a few marks. The water is just to allow the thing to go on like clearly and not kind of all scrunch up. You know, we were testing for such. You don't need to know this. This is just the one that we do. This is just the stain that we do use in this practical. But as I said, if you just say use a stain, it, it's fine. Okay, so next half of your answer then. How do I move this down? Okay, next part of your answer, you're going to be talking about how to use the microscope. So another subheading, I'm just going to say using the microscope. And this, I think, is the hard part. Because in order to get full marks here, you need to address the question, which was viewing it at times by 40. And they've told you that the eyepiece lens is only, what was it? Was it times 10? No, times five. Well, I got that totally wrong. It was times five is the eyepiece lens and you're viewing it at a magnification of times 50. So what we're not gonna do is not gonna add a 45 objective lens. So you remember you've got the bit at the top, which is the bit you look down and then you've got an objective lens, which is the bit below that, um, we are gonna, you multiply them together. So if we're trying to get an overall magnification of times by 50, we need to use an objective lens, the second lens that is actually directly above the slide, that needs to be times by 10, okay? So let's talk about that. Okay, so we are going to clip the slide onto this, stage and use the lowest power objective lens because we always start with the lowest one.
Remember, objective lens is the second lens. Normally, it'll be times by four. And then what we're going to use, um, there, there are different names for this, but I call them the coarse focusing dial. Are we using times by 10? Because we're trying to get times 50 overall and the eyepiece is times by five. So we have to times five by 10 to get overall magnification of 50. Clip onto the stage, lower power objective lens. We use the coarse focusing dial. And what that does is that moves the stage close to the lens. You move stage up. If you get the wrong name for the lenses, it's not the end of the world. Just as long as you show the idea that the second lens that you're using is times by 10, they care about the number here in order to answer the question fully. Uh, and then you move it up and then you move it away. I'm not going to go into detail because remember, we're only thinking like three or four marks for this part. We move the stage up and then we adjust the fine focusing dial. And this is what gives us a clear image. But make sure you know the difference between those two. So coarse moves it up and down, fine, fine tunes it. Okay. And then... Once we've done that, we are going to swap to times by 10 objective lens and refocus it. So you could have a question on either of these alone, either how to prepare the slide or how to use the microscope. But remember, using the microscope, you're always, the thing that people forget to say is that we actually start at the lowest power objective lens. And also people get really confused with this numbers thing. So remember, if we're trying to get our overall number, you need to times the two lenses together. Okay, so that's question one done. Well, it's actually question two on the first required practical. So has anyone got any questions on that one before we move on to... The next one, and we're going to go on to the osmosis practical next with the potato ones. Uh, I see a question, will I be doing other topics? Yeah, I've got another lesson later today at 4 p.m. and we'll be doing organisation. Um, would I advise using subheadings? Yeah, definitely. Why do we start with the lowest power objective lens? It just enables us to actually focus. Can you use subtopics in the actual exam? Yes, you can, definitely. Just think about it. The examiner's got loads of papers to mark. I mean, I know this from being a teacher and marking on this paper. Anything you can do to make their life easier, they love. Why do we peel onions into layers? Just because otherwise, imagine putting a whole thing of onion on there. The light's not going to be able to go through. But it's about passing the light through. Would I do triple? The only thing for triple I'm not covering here is the culture and microorganism stuff. And I might do a whole other lesson on paper one, triple only stuff. And yeah, everything that I wrote would get you six marks. Could they give random magnification values in the exam? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I can explain magnification versus resolution. So magnification is just the number of times bigger the image is than the object. Um, so in comparison, and you've got the formula for that. Resolution is actually the shortest difference between two points in order for them to be able to see a separate point. So resolution is more about your level of detail. Would this come up in the AQA biology paper? Yeah, it could. Can you use bullet points in every question? Yes, you could. How would you do this if they did different numbers? You just make sure they're multiplied together. So if they ask you for times by 400 and they said your eyepiece lens was times by 10, you would multiply 10 by 40 objective lens and that would give you 400 overall. Use the coarse focus and fine focus because coarse focus brings it roughly into focus and fine focus, fine tunes it. And this could come up in the foundation paper, but they're more likely to structure the answer rather than give you a six mark question on it. I'm gonna go on to the next practical now, which is under the third part of the cell structure topic, the cell biology topic, and it's linked to osmosis. It is question number eight, describe a method to investigate the effect of range of concentrations of sugar solutions on the change of mass of potato tissue, right? How are we feeling about that question? What are our thoughts? Would would you like that question? Or is that horrible? Okay, so let's, yeah, okay, some of you are unsure how to feel about this question. I'm gonna give you some really useful tips here for how to do a general sort of practical question. Because 
this is a required practical, but they could. They did this in an A-level paper, not that, well, actually it was A-level paper last year. They changed the osmosis practicals slightly and they did something to do with finding out, something to do with mangroves instead of potatoes, it was to do with mangroves. They could ask you this to do with any sort of plant tissue. Okay, this one I've already written some annotations just to enable us to get through it faster. So let's talk through it. Right, so when with any describer method question, what you want to be considering is you need to show that you're making it valid. 